Okay, today we're going to be assembling this ESP32 chip with this uh, CAN transceiver. We're going to solder some female headers onto the CAN transceiver. Use this JS2 connector for a quick connect. And then solder these male headers onto the ESP32 chip so that we could easily remove it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is uh, going to solder some female headers onto this uh, transceiver, this CAN bus featherwing transceiver. We have uh, 12 pins here and 16 pins here. The end result is going to look something like this. I have a 12 pin and a 16 pin header. Okay, we're going to take the transceiver, place the female headers facing upwards to the chip. We're simply going to place this upside down on a flat surface. Make sure that it's kind of aligned and flat how you like it. It should just sit there. And now we're going to grab our soldering equipment and solder it in. Have the solder gun preheated here. I like to solder around 375, 385. Uh, that value you should get from the solder itself when you buy it. And I've got the gun here and our uh, sponge with a just, just slightly damp to help wipe off any excess solder in between pins. Okay, we got our featherboard facing down. With, we grab some solder. And we're simply going to go pin by pin. Got a kind of a flat head solder tip here. We're just gonna place it up against that pin. And just touch the solder very lightly. There's one pin. Do this 27 more times. So now we're going to just flip it around. And make sure the female is female header is flat and kind of aligned how we want it. Do the same thing 12 more times. Okay, now we're all done. Just here is the finished product. We're all soldered in. Now, note that the CAN transceiver only requires two pins, which are here and here, and we have soldered this whole thing. And we've mainly soldered the whole thing just so that it's stable. Um, you know, you could have gotten a smaller transceiver and sort of if you had the right enclosure. But I like this for stacking these. Uh, that's what the feather wing form factor is for. So it's nice and easy to stack these uh, and have like a little stable, a stable setup. But that's it for the transceiver. Okay, next we're gonna do the ESP32 chip that I have here. This is the, S, uh, the S3 the S feather from Adafruit. The reason why I like the S3 feather is that it's got Bluetooth 5. Um, it's got a 3.7 volt uh, LiPo battery uh, connector, and it's a USB-C for connecting to the computer and uh, powering through USB. And since GoPro and everything else is USB-C, it's just convenient not to have to carry multiple cables around uh, when connecting. And what we're going to do here is basically the opposite. This is going to lay on top of the featherboard. So if I bring the featherboard over, this is going to go on top here. So we take these male 
headers. We're going to solder them on like so. And so this is going to be a little wobbly, so we're going to use the featherboard bottom here to kind of hold this uh, stable. So just lightly press them down, and we have it set, set in there, right? So you can see. Now we could use this as a nice, stable, flat uh, soldering area. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing. We got 18, oh, I'm sorry, 28 pins to solder, and we're just going to go through them one by one. soldered product. These could come out now. So you'll be able to screw in the can high and low. Okay, got my JST connector here, two pins. Uh, can bus wire always has to be twisted pair for the signal, so I'm just gonna twist the wire kind of evenly. So just to keep it kind of in the twisted uh, mode, I'm just going to get a little thing of heat shrink, and I'm just going to slip the heat shrink over, and like right about here, I'm just going to use a heat gun or a hair dryer, either works, and we're going to just heat that up and uh, just kind of help keep this in place. Okay. Used a heat gun to just shrink that wire, and now we're going to stay twisted. Okay, we're going to take our tiny screwdriver. I'm going to put the red in can high and the black in can low. Like that. Just tighten down. And they're secure. Now we could put back our ESP32 chip and we are good to go. Okay, let's talk power. You can power this by this USB port and it does work fairly well with the car's USB port. Uh, what I do find is though trying to power this chip with a say anchor portable battery the portable battery ends up auto shutting off because even at full power, this chip uses so little power that the anchor thinks that the uh, device is no longer charging, so it, it turns the battery off. So I was not able to power this with my normal sort of phone charging power bank uh, because of that. So you either could plug, hard plug it into your car's USB port, or you could get these 3.7 volt uh, LiPo batteries, and those would just plug right into here, and you could have a power. This battery here is uh, 620 milliamp hours, and this will last an entire day at the track. 